well. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel, like and share um, if you want, and um, it helps support my channel. So I really do appreciate it. I really do. Thank you so much for being here. Um, tonight, I just wanted to do a short video and talk about manipulative things. Um, I was thinking about something. It just came across my mind. I, I, I don't know if you guys ever have this and you can comment if you want, but um, I am somebody who uh, gets night terrors sometimes. I don't get them as often as I used to, but I relive certain things and it's like PTSD and um, anyway, I wake up scared. It's like I'm terrorized. And so um, a lot of people um, get this and, and so I'm curious of your stories. Um, and uh, the narcissist will try to make you feel like crazy if you're like staying with them and something like this happens with you. I don't know if it's ever happened with you, but I've had this where I was gaslit before. Like I, like there was something wrong with me. Um, well, I guess there is kind of because I mean, you know, that's trauma. There's trauma that we are reliving and it might be in our dreams. Um, and if you're with a narcissist and you are a codependent or any other um, personality that's going on and that's, you know, codependents and narcissistic people are extremely attracted to each other. Um, so that's why I talk about that quite often in empaths. And um, if you are, both of you have had trauma and you both are going through a lot of the same things. It's just that you need, you want the same things, but one doesn't trust. Actually, I don't know that either one trusts. It's just a very toxic relationship. One is very giving and one is taking. What can happen in these relationships? If you are with someone who is a serious manipulator, they may even know that they are. They're always trying to master their craft. And today with online and books and, you know, even uh, with us coming out and talking about narcissistic abuse and other types of abuse, it does make it a little bit easier for people like that to come and watch. And try, I've talked about this before where they're trying to uh, learn more manipulative tactics. And if you're someone who is aware, you will spot it. If you have um, been doing your therapy, you can spot it and, uh, ha you know, be cautious from it. But if you're somebody who's not aware, you could be, ring, you know, reeled right in. And an example that I had that I was thinking about, because I've been watching, you know, I'm in um, the support groups and I can see what people post and things like that. So a lot of times the manipulative tactics stuff is talked about, the gaslighting, it's huge on, um, thing that we talk about and we share so that we know. And um, it reminded me of a time where I actually stayed over with someone and I went to get a pen the next morning out of the, um, the nightstand. I mean, I had been with this person for a really long time, so um, I didn't think anything of it. I just opened up the nightstand. I was going to grab a pen and um, didn't think anything of it. And there was this book there, and it was like this woman on the... It, she, she, well, I better not... Just, anyway, I don't want to describe it too much, but it was one that made me go, what is that? So I kind of picked it up and uh, turned it over, and it was on um, how to manipulate women and make them basically uh, get with you, do whatever you want. It was detailed detail on how to mind manipulate women. I was beyond, beyond upset. Like I was like, this person has a problem. And I, so um, I didn't sit there and read the book right then and there, but I did buy the book and I read the book and, because I wanted to know about it. I looked up reviews on the book. I l read what the guy said about the book and what other people said. And, um, Basically, it is a horrible thing that people do to try to manipulate people and trauma bind them or embed them to them without them r really knowing it. It's <clears throat> it's basically m manipulating someone's mind into thinking that's what they really want. And so basically people aren't really basically in love with someone, but they think they are because they've been manipulated. And um, also... Um, 
in a breakup even, that can happen as well because a narcissistic person feel it's like a game to them. It's, they have to win. And I'm always trying to figure out what the heck they're trying to win, but it's power and control. So no matter how nice you are, whatever it is, and you're just trying, you, they, they don't see it. They have such a different perception and they will study you. They know you and they know what to do to mind manipulate the situation. And that makes them feel powerful. And it's like, ha, ha, ha. And so if you want something, this is kind of a way to know whether you are with someone who's like a narcissist. This is just like one thing. I should do like a thing of 10 or 20 or something. But <clears throat> if you want something from the narcissist, that'll be the one thing. Like if they are, um, if you are in a tug of war or whatever with them, they'll withhold that from you. They'll give you something you don't want. But the one thing that you do want, they'll withhold from you. So if you want to talk to them, they'll withhold it. If you if the, if you uh, want something physical from them, like sex, they'll withhold it. If um, you need something from them that they have and you want that, nope, they'll withhold it. Whether you know they will make and then they'll gaslight and make excuses or make you make it you feel like it's your fault, that kind of thing. And they do it on purpose. It makes them feel better. It comforts them in some way. It soothes their anxiety because in a way it makes them feel better into thinking, see, you need something from me and I have this power back because they might have been feeling bad by some narcissistic injury that you may have given them. And so it's, it's impossible, no matter what you do, no matter how nice you are, no matter what you do, a narcissist, they're just difficult people. They're difficult people. They can be nice sometimes, but when they are, it's because they want something. And uh, so if you really want to know if somebody's a narcissist, you know, they will withhold whatever it is that you really want from them if they are being stubborn. And... <laughs> It's a game. It's a game of chess for them. And all the time they want to be like checkmate. So really, you know, when, I mean, I have to tell myself this too, because a lot of times I don't want to think that everybody's a narcissist, right? And even though I'm conditioned and, and my whole life, you know, I've been in, in and out of some toxic relationships, uh, quite a few more than, you know, just one, um, because of the way I was conditioned, um, I thought it was normal. I know now that it's not, but I still, I don't want to believe that everybody's like that. And even though I know that my personality type is what um, comes with the narcissist and of course I'm attracted to them. Um, that doesn't mean that everybody I've ever been attracted to is a narcissist, by the way. I, I just want to make that very clear. But, or that everybody I've been with has been a narcissist either, because I talk about different people, you know, like a bus driver that is, it's different things. But I don't know why I'm explaining like this, but I felt like I needed to. Um, and then I make, it makes me lose my train of thought for crying out loud. But if I want to know if somebody is a narcissist, um, there it's never going to be easy. It's always like this tug of war thing. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy friendship. It's not an easy work relationship. It's not an easy romance. It's not an easy, the, everything is difficult. And in whatever you want, they're not going to give you. So basically you're not to want anything and they're to want everything and get everything. It's, it's mind boggling. And they expect it. They expect it. And when they're not getting what they want, they're plotting to figure out how. And they are manipulating other people, trying to manipulate you, gaslighting you into believing whatever it is that they need you to believe. And it's all because they're feeling insecure. And so basically both parties can be quite unhealthy. And at some point you just have to just let something be. 
You cannot reason with someone like that. You can try and try and try and try to prove yourself that this person isn't the way, you know, toxic and you can be friends and you can just, and you can't, there's only so much you can do. But depending on where you are in it, depends on how the players play. And um, a narcissist doesn't trust anybody. They don't trust themselves, so they don't trust anybody else. And so they think, because they are manipulators, they think that you are too and that you're trying to manipulate them and that you're trying to gain something or win something or it's, I don't know, but that's just how they think. It doesn't matter. And then they, they really do think that there's something wrong with you and that you're crazy. And the reason is because why would you be with someone like them? They know how they are. They know that they can't be trusted. They know the things that they do. They think everybody else is like that. And they think you're a nut job for wanting to be with someone like that. It's like, what's wrong with you that you would um, be like that? There's got to be something seriously wrong with you that you would be with someone like that. So they just look at you like there's something seriously wrong. And you know what? At some point, you just have to be like, you know, this was just something that didn't work. And I, you... You just have to give up. They expect you to. They they may subconsciously not re realize they're doing this, but they are um, forcing that on you. And then they can say, see, you, I knew you would always do that. Um, it's hard. I have a hard time with that one because I don't like to abandon people that I care about. And... Um, but I have been in those situations before and it's, it's difficult, but, uh, it's the way it is. So just know that there are people out there that do want to try to mind manipulate you. You need to be aware of that. Be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of all your contact if they are a narcissistic person. And if you're not sure, there are certain things that you can look for. And um, one of them is what I told you. You know, if you're needing something and wanting something, they will hold that back from you. Um, a lot of people talk about the sex, um, how a narcissist will ho hold sex off from them. But here's the thing. Let me talk about that for a second. A narcissist, sex to them, they are not connecting with you on an emotional level and so you're basically an object to them and sex is just power and control it's all about power and control and so and you might get in a relationship and then I, I don't really want to go there but they um that's why they want to do it. It's, it's, you know, otherwise they can just take care of themselves. Do you know? It's not, and you might want to be connecting to them. And they like that because they like to see that love in your eyes for them. That makes them feel powerful and it makes them feel grand. But um, they really aren't really interested in the act altogether. I mean, they can, they're like, I might as well just take care of myself. Um a somatic uh, narcissist is somebody who's into the way they look and their body and being all perfect looking and they like to look at themselves. It's not about you at all. They like to just watch them <laughs> in the act. So uh, there's different things that go with that sex thing. But uh, if you want sex from the narcissist, they will withhold it from you if they know you want it and they're wanting to um, get at you in some way to feel better. And it could be because you've done something to them you may not realize that you have that's hurt them and they need to feel better, so they want to hurt you in some way, and it just gives them some power to be able to hold, withhold from you. So, but when you when they're trying to get you, withholding, giving a little bit, then withholding, giving a little bit, withholding. That's how they uh, trauma bond you to them. So, it's really confusing. It's very confusing for people to grasp because people, normal people would be like, "Why in the world would anybody spend so much time doing something like that?" But I promise you, there are people out there that do, and you would be surprised who it is that's doing it. I mean, some people are, they'll do all kinds of stuff. They'll get into witchcraft and 
all kinds of things that are very negative uh, vibrational uh, things. And, you know, an empathic person is somebody who is positive and the light is around them and they shine. And um, narcissistic people are very attracted to that, but they want to dim that light because they don't feel that. Then they want to steal those traits. Um, so, um, but they don't really believe in all that fluff either because they're just unhappy people. It's really sad. Narcissistic people who just have narcissistic traits and maybe even high traits, and they're if they're not narcissistic personality disordered, they actually have some hope um, in therapy. There's a lot of hope for them in therapy. Just like if you're codependent, you can go into therapy and um, graduate from that basically and have healthy relationships. Um, a narcissistic personality disordered person, you're gonna mm, have a really hard time with that, especially if it's a malignant narcissist that um, they really just want to do mean things and want to hurt people. They are always hurting people. And um, very, 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 very dark and unhappy people. There's not a lot you can do there, unfortunately, but if it's just narcissistic traits, and even if they're on the high side, there is a chance if that narcissistic person wants to go into therapy and get some work. And so anyway, if that gives you a little bit of hope, but I'm here to tell you if you're being abused, you should really think long and hard about your self-worth, love yourself, do whatever you need to do to take care of you. You can love someone from afar. You can love them from afar, but you don't necessarily have to be in a relationship with them. Be in a relationship with yourself, love yourself, and do some self-care so that you can move forward in your life and do all the healthy, happy, loving things you want to do. Okay? Until next time. Bye.